after uh, during the Pope's visit. You know, the facades of these old, crappy buildings, they got to pray they never have an earthquake there, uh, have all been painted, you know, to, to temporarily cover up the dirt and the ruins. And no sooner does he leave, those buildings will fade once again. I mean, this is, this is a communist regime. He goes there, does a little speech, does the papal blessing, all this kind of stuff. For what? Nothing will change. What a tease to these people. That's pathetic. Anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I want to hear from you on the Savage Nation. Here's our phone number. It's 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So I'm watching here. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. I'm watching the Pope. He's in his uh, specially outfitted Jeep Wrangler. That's the new Pope mobile. So he's traded the Fiat 500 now for the Wrangler, and he's going down the streets. Uh, keeping it within the religious vein, I'll get to your calls in just a moment, but this is the most heart-wrenching imagery I've seen in a long time, and I've seen some, I've seen some bad stuff coming out of the Middle East, and this is just right up there with some of the worst. Poor teenage kid, just weeping, crying, Ugh, so sad. Why? Because he's been placed in an armored vehicle packed with explosives, and he's been told, get in, put the pedal to the metal, drive, and blow yourself up. Oh, these are not tears of joy for Allah. These are toys, of, tears of absolute fear. But you see, that's how that sect has been spreading its vile hatred and filth for years. They intimidate. They intimidate. Here's Mark, WABC, New York. Mark, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yes. Um, people have been begging the Muslim, the so-called moderate, peace-loving Muslims of this country to speak out of, about the radicalization, the atrocities that are being committed around the world. And uh, I hear crickets. Why? Because I believe that they really first of all they say that they will be harmed if they speak out i think that's bull crap i believe that uh they really do want islam to take over the world like they say they want to they say it they tell us every day death to america they want to take over the world and this country and i believe here's what i would mark i appreciate your call on the savage nation i i would disagree with you well I think there are a couple different things going on. I think there are some people who just want to go about their lives, like in, in any religion. There are just people who want to go about their lives. They're not really serious about it. They were born into it, whatever. They just want to go about their lives. And they know if they speak out, they, they will be persecuted. They're afraid. They're afraid. They're afraid. So they drop to their knees five times a day, and they wear the outfits, because they're, they're afraid. But there are others who want to see the ideology spread and they're keeping their mouth shut because they know over time. And when they say over time, we're not talking a year or 10 years. They know 100 years from now, 200 years from now, we'll win. That, just look at the history of the world. And I will share some of that history with you in the next hour on this, The Savage Nation, which I really look forward to. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. Here on the Savage Nation, michaelsavage.com is the website. By the way, Michael's new book, Government Zero, is going to be available in October. You can pre-order it now at michaelsavage.com. This is the Savage Nation. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, 
Kosher. And here he is, Michael Savage. Michael is off. Brian Sussman on. This is the Savage Nation. It's always a pleasure, quite frankly, an honor to get behind this microphone. I'm broadcasting live from the San Francisco Bay Area, KSFO, a station that, of course, uh, is proud to have Michael Savage, not just as a part of the lineup, but Savage built the station when he launched his program in the 90s. And I was just a listener then. And then I became a part of the station some years ago and now host the morning show here. So it's, an, again, an honor to be with you uh, on this, the Savage Nation. Pope's getting all the attention nationally, I'm noticing, but we're focusing on other issues of the day. Now, I will just mention, here in California, I don't know what it's like where you live, but we have a serious illegal immigration problem here. Uh, there are certain neighborhoods that are completely filled with those who have come into this country illegally. And, of course, along with people that really and truly only came here to work, you have others who really and truly only came here to do bad things. And these god-awful sanctuary city policies, which have virtually almost every city in our state's a sanctuary city. And uh, you know all the stories in the news of late where these sanctuary cities have been housing really, really bad guys, rapists, murderers, etc., just like Trump was talking about. So now we have the Trump effect. Yeah, the Trump effect. It's now having an impact down in L.A. County, my friends. So you have something happening whereby, um, and this is all because of Trump, and they're calling it the Trump effect. So credit is being given for a new L.A. County policy that lets federal agents interview jail inmates who have committed serious crimes to gauge if they need to be deported. So in other words, these are jail inmates. They're about to be released from jail. And now ICE is being allowed to be brought in to see if they need to be deported. This, is, this should have been the modus operandi all along. But it's finally happening in L.A. County. And there are other counties around the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area, where they're saying, yeah, okay, we need to review this policy. And in fact, we're going to change the policy right now. When somebody's in our jails and they're done with their sentence, before we allow them to leave, we're bringing in ICE. See, the people have spoken. But more importantly, it's Trump who got the conversation started. So God bless him for that. Now, in the meantime, let's just take that to the ultimate of jails or prisons, if you will, Gitmo. The detention center. Here we have a Saudi who is Osama bin Laden's bodyguard. Abdul Rahman Shalabi. Released. He's going back to Saudi Arabia. Oh, he's going to be rehabilitated. You, okay, here is what the DOD said about this guy in 2008. I guess Obama screwed the DOB, DOD. This is what Obama's doing. He's screwing everybody. Just middle finger to everything. Why do you think? I'm just going to throw it out there. Oh, it'll sound so politically incorrect. Why do you think, of all the people that he could nominate to become Army Secretary, of all the people, why do you think he would name, first, somebody who never served, and second, somebody who's gay? It's his big middle finger to the Army in America. Because he personally doesn't like the Army, and he personally doesn't like the fact that our military has had a policy or policies in place regarding sexual orientation. He didn't like that. See, with Obama, the fundamental transportation is him getting even. This is just a mean-spirited, angry guy who's out there. I'll show them. Everything he does, just get even. Let's just get even. I want to close down Gitmo. They won't let me watch this. I'll empty the place. Listen to what the DOD said about this Abdul Rahman Shalabi in 2008. Are you ready? Now, why would they lie? A high risk, or he is a high risk, as he is likely, I'm reading directly from the copy, he is a high risk, as he is likely to pose a threat to the United States, its interests, and its allies. He, is a, he, he possesses a high threat from a detention perspective, and Abdul Rahman Shalabi, Osama bin Laden's bodyguard, 
is of high intelligence value. This guy was a bad mother, shut your mouth. Trained in Sharia law at the college level. Taught the Quran. And then trained in hand-to-hand combat. If you're going to have a bodyguard, you're Osama bin Laden. You're the most wanted man on the planet. If you're going to have a bodyguard, aren't you going to have the very best? And it's just like all these gangs. MS-13, Norteño Sereños. You could bring it into a mafia, the drug cartels. The bodyguards that the chieftains have, the head dog has, the bodyguards, these are going to be not just the baddest of the bad, but they're going to be loyal to a fault. And if they're ever suspected for one moment of being disloyal, boom, they're gone and they're dead. So why would it be any different with Osama bin Laden? This guy that Obama just let walk was bad to the core. Obama lets him go. Obama lets him go. MichaelSavage.com, that's the website. Highly encourage you to go there. No borders, no language, no culture. That's the subtitle of the new book, Government Zero. Buy it now, MichaelSavage.com. Our phone number is, of course, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. All right, let's go to the lines, because I think Frank calling out of Vegas, KBET, will have something to say that dovetails nicely into what I just said. Go ahead, Frank, you're on the air. Uh, real quickly, Brian, Mike. You have my own wonderful show, 5 to 9 a.m. each morning on KSFO in San Francisco. <laughs> North, I don't hear. Yes, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> and, uh, uh, hey, listen, I love getting behind the wheel here on Savage's show. To me, that's an absolute delight. But go ahead, Frank. You're one of the best uh, top three stepping guys I, I've ever heard. Uh, I, I just want to quickly say that, you know, in, in a sense, um, La Raza, uh, MS-13, and Islam is lit a match under Americans' posteriors of, of all descents. But, but if we have an allegiance, and hopefully mm-hmm. the cops are waking up, because they're, they're, they're going to bear the brunt of this crossfire, but but I think uh, I just wanted to say that hopefully America's waking up. Uh, grab, go to the gun shops. You need a thirty odd six. You need a long range hunter's uh, um, shotgun. You need a sawed off shot. You need a forty five, and your wife needs a nine to if she can handle a forty Glock. And you need to understand uh, natural law and the inalienable right to defend yourself. Thank you so much, Brian. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Well, listen, we need to understand our rights, the rights given to us by God. And you need to understand how there are forces in this world, uh, both, both, both physical and I guess we could say metaphysical or spiritual, that want to take those away. It's, it's just amazing. Now, let's continue the conversation here on the Savage Nation, and we will go to John WJR. John, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Brian. I've been researching uh, presidential pardons, and I've come up with the following information. There are no limits. In fact, one of our presidents did as many as a 1,000. Um, I don't know if it would entail Gitmo, but I think maybe our Congress should probably put something in front of them to limit presidential pardons and see where he goes with it. Oh, this is his way of closing down Gitmo. He's just going to release them. He has the executive authority to do that, and he will. And again, John, let's think about this most recent character that's been released to go back to Saudi Arabia, Arabia, his home, for rehabilitation. This was Osama bin Laden's right-hand, most trusted individual. How could we possibly think that he's going to be safe? You know, I've been following this since six months before Obama won the first election. And I tell you, it gets crazier all the time, Brian, and I I just don't have an answer. I appreciate your call, though. Robert, WABC. Robert, I believe I'm going to agree with you, and I know a lot of other people will as well. Go right ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, we're going to agree. I just wanted to get it out there because your last two callers I agree with. My God, how much we agree. But I had to get it out there real quickly. Um, the guy said, I don't have any answers. I think I do have some answers, and I think if you just open your eyes, you'll look at groups like, uh, head by uh, like uh, Barbara Lerner Spector, uh, who openly admitted that she had you know, an obligation to transform Europe. Um, and if you go to Re- Refugee Resettlement Watch here, I think they're ba- 